Morning, y'all. It is Wednesday. I hope everyone is doing well today. Um, this morning, I am in the kitchen because I wanted to talk to you about hunger. And I'm going to start off by telling you a couple of stories. It was a bitterly cold night in January. My mother, my youngest daughter, and I were returning to our hotel from a long day of sightseeing in New York City. We were too cold and too tired to wait for table service at one of the sit-down restaurants, so we decided to duck into one of the fast food places near the hotel. We ordered and went to our table and we were eating. Um, my mom finished first and said she was going to step right outside onto the sidewalk where there was better cell phone reception. Um, I kept my eye on her and at one point I looked up and she was talking to this really tall, scary looking man and I got concerned. Just as I was about to jump up and go out to her, she um, walks in the restaurant with the man following right behind her. And they marched right down the center and up to the counter and the young woman asked my mom, can I help you? And she said, well, no, I've already eaten, but I want you to give this gentleman whatever he wants to eat. And the man said, I will have a small hamburger and a small fry and a cup of coffee. My mother said, no, uh, double that order, supersize it please, and add a milkshake to it as well. When she handed the bag of food to the man, um, she said to him, now are you sure that you have enough to eat for the evening? And he said, yes ma'am, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. And he turned and walked away. Well, as she came to the table, I immediately scolded her and said, mom, you took a risk. You took a risk talking to a stranger on a dark street in New York City. And she said, I, I know, I know. She said, you know, I can't solve all of that man's problems, but he was hungry and I knew I could solve that one just for the moment. It wasn't the first time that I'd seen my mom feed the hungry. When I was a little bitty girl, we lived in Arkansas for a time being. Back in the 1960s, uh, homeless men often jumped onto empty boxcars on trains and rode them from town to town, um, looking for maybe a little bit of work or um, some food, a meal. Uh, the train ran through our town. One Sunday afternoon after church, we had gathered around the kitchen table. I don't remember exactly what the menu was, but I'm sure it included either pot roast or fried chicken, mashed potatoes, biscuits and gravy, and of course, mama's homemade banana pudding. We had barely sat down to the table. My father had just finished saying grace when there was a knock at the back door and my dad went to the door. And um, it was one of these men that had gotten off the boxcar, off the train in town, and was walking by our house, said he had smelled the aroma of food uh, coming through our open screen doors and windows. Well, before he could even ask for a meal, my mom had jumped up from the table, grabbed a plate, filled it to overflowing, taken it along with a glass of uh, cold sweet tea to the door, and she and my dad handed it to the, the man. He did not want to come inside to eat, but said that he would sit on the porch and eat. Some time later, mom went back out, he was gone. Uh, the plate was there, all the food was gone. On top of the plate was the napkin he had used and a small flower that he had plucked from the yard. To the best of my knowledge, my mother has never preached a sermon, but I believe that she lived a sermon on both of those occasions. She not only fed the physical needs of those two very different men, but she also fed an emotional and a spiritual need in him. And that got me to thinking today about spiritual hunger. In today's world, there are many types of hunger. There's the obvious problem of, of physical hunger and, and it has gotten worse in recent months. We see the reports on the news of food pantries that are, are having to um, serve one, two, three, four, five times the clients that they typically serve in a month. These people, because of COVID and other concerns, do not have the ability to have the food to put into their bodies that keep them physically and nutritionally strong and healthy and sound. But there's also a great emotional and spiritual hunger in this country right now. Men, women, and families who do not have enough spiritual food to keep them strong, healthy, and sound. The ways to ease physical hunger are pretty easy to understand. Give them food, give them bread, milk, meat, fruit, vegetables. The ways to ease spiritual hunger are not so easy. I mean, you can't pick them up like a jar of peanut butter or a can of green beans and hold them in your hand. And so if you don't understand the ways to ease spiritual hunger, it becomes easier to overlook that hunger or worse yet, ignore it. 
But I believe that as Christians, we are called to feed not only the bellies of our neighbors and the people in our community and our world, but also the hearts and the spirits and the souls. How do you do that? Well, I didn't want this morning's message to become too long and too boring for you, so I decided to split it into two. And tomorrow, I'm going to give you my thoughts on ways that we can look for and find to ease the spiritual hunger of people who are starving for that in our world. In the meantime, I want you to pray today. I want you to pray that God will open your eyes to those around you who are spiritually hungry and ask if he can show you ways to help them. Maybe you're the one who's spiritually hungry today. If that's the case, ask God to point your eyes in the direction of the resources and the people, the scriptures, the devotionals, the prayers that can help fill you up with all of his goodness. I'll see you in the morning.